we wearing the denim one, denim one, denim one, denim one, denim one, denim one, So we're going the first step. Uh, you want to stamp it on the cylinder? <laughs> <Shit. laughs> so you're not deep in. Yeah, so if your husband now says that he wants you to be a housewife, what will you do? Since we are doing it. Oh hell no! In the fifteen for my bro, yeah. Fifteen with my bro, yeah. Lagos, I wanna come home. Lagos, I wanna come home. Show my love. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today, yes, I have beautiful ladies here. Yes, so thank you, <laughs> thank you. So can you no cameras, please? No cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony, Tony Olaoye. I'm Jemima, Victoria, and these two beautiful ladies have YouTube channels. I'm going to put the link in the description box as well as their names on the screen. And this is Jemima as well. She has an Instagram page, which I'm also going to leave the link down below. So today we're going to be talking about some of the questions you guys sent to me as well as a topic I actually want to put out there because I watched a video earlier this week and the question arose that who is the provider in the home especially in this day and age. So I want this beautiful panel of judges here to give us their opinion of who they think like plays the provider role in the family and if you think that in this day and age it should change to reflect in more modern times. How do I deal with my boyfriend, now ex, who got engaged to someone else? Why are you dealing with your yeah. ex-boyfriend? He's engaged. Leave him alone. Yeah. Like, but it's hard though. Like, you can't yeah, say it's that. it's kind of hard, but what can you do, really? Like, you, you just have to, to avoid. You just have to avoid, like, yeah, if you don't see anything about you. Stalking. Exactly. Don't. Just be around friends that will make you happy. Mm -hmm. Try and pass time. With, like if you are seeing his, you know how when a just get married now. <laughs> hashtag love ask love or whatever. Exactly, like, or hashtag um, Tony Femi twenty six. Exactly. Like, you know, like I yeah. feel like you just have to block him. You need to from block Instagram him. so that you don't see thing. things. So you just give yourself time for yourself to heal. Like that's that's true. Right. Next question is about parents holding you back from your dreams. This one says, I'm 23 years old and my parents are making me choose between my family and my dreams, which is of traveling the world to teach. Hmm. <sighs> oh, it's difficult because yeah. like, you don't want to disobey your parents, but at the same time, you can't. Like, I feel like family is also one of, they're also one of the people that can actually hinder you from seriously. Your seriously. So, one thing you want to do in life is, I mean, you don't want to do in life is live a life on like an unfulfilled life, basically. Exactly. Um, so I would say, oh, I don't wow. know. Are you see, still see, see, girl, have you seen that road? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Like, listen, we should also understand that she's not saying that she wants to go and do something stupid. Like she wants to go and become exactly. an exotic she's dancer in yeah. California. She wants to go around the world to teach. teach, to make an impact yeah, on the life of the children. Like, I feel like if your parents are holding you back, I just have to tell them, mommy, daddy, I know every day your parents are love and I respect you so much, but this is my life. I'm 23. Mm -hmm. I can't live my life for you. So I would really appreciate it if you guys can support me on this journey. But if you can't. I'm afraid I still have to do what is best exactly. for me. Exactly. Sometimes it's based on their experiences and they're trying to like shield you from something bad that could happen. But at the end of the day, you have to go on your own path. Exactly. So you just have to, it's up to you. Like if you, you feel you have, have, you have the strength yeah. to do this by yourself, then just go for it. Yeah. Well, this leads me to the panel question of the day. So, I watched a video earlier this week where they were talking about who does the provider role in the family. Is it the male or is it the female, right? Mm -hmm. So as girls living in the modern world, right, yeah. things are changing. This is not the same thing as it was 20 years ago. So what do you think? Who do you think should play that provider role in the relationship? And if it's the woman, is it true that if she's any more than the man, she tends to disrespect you know the map so what do you guys think this okay to start off like i think you sh you and your husband should just be financially intimate so you have to understand your strengths your weaknesses in that area like who is who's earning more money who is not mm -hmm. and it just depends on you guys like someone from outside cannot say this should be the sole provider it can be anybody exactly. yeah. it can be anybody so it's just just be financially intimate is my thing Mm -hmm. and you're good to go 
as long as he's good with what you're doing and you're good with what he's doing what, what matters yeah but i feel like if you take him like cultures and tradition yeah. as well especially like from the nigerian perspective Even Christian man perspective as well has always been the breadwinner of the family when it comes to like i feel like that traditional role the women are supposed to take care of the kids even though they want to work yes but financially the man is always the one who is providing significantly when it comes to finances for his family but we have to also look at the situation what if the man doesn't have yeah, enough, enough funds, funds right mm-hmm. and the woman is exactly. earning more we can't now say okay the man is still going to provide mm-hmm. when his job is not paying us as i know but that's that's i right? understand that but i'm not saying that the man should be the one to provide 100 percent. let me just get that clear yeah. that's not what i'm saying i'm also saying that like if we go back to our traditions and culture the man is the one who always provides for the family yeah and there's nothing wrong with that but in this day and age obviously the man and the woman can both be the ones who provide financially and significantly but at the same time i don't know but fathers don't really go the extra amount to go and take care of their kids and drive their kids to school and like pick up the kids wake them up give them their showers give them their food i don't really see fathers fathers do that but it's yeah, not, no, it's as not the norm yeah yeah, yeah it's Definitely. not the norm like mothers do that most like that is the role of the mother so then even after the woman is like going through all of that doing that do you then not expect her to then provide like 50 50 financially to that family when she's already making sacrifices like her own exactly but i still feel like at the end of the day like i believe that the man is the head of the house and woman is the neck doesn't mean that like one is inferior the other one is not but they don't necessarily play equal roles in the house exactly. that's the truth mm-hmm. because I feel like I won't lie, I'll be one of those girls that if I am more than my husband, I would look down with him. I know it. It's like when people say it, I know that'll be me because I put a lot of stock in acts of service. Like those things that we do, like it means a lot to me. So if I'm going to earn more money than you, you still have the right to play your part. You cannot say because I earn more money than you, then leave it to the wife to do everything. Exactly. Because then what is your if I put you as the head of the house, what are you doing? Like, I'm not going to give it all to you to do everything, but if you can afford to take up the family, you should. You should. You exactly. should. There's no such thing as, and you should take the most part in it. Because if I'm going to go back and do all those things that Tony was talking about, you have the right to take care of your family. And if you're not financially uh, stable, get financially stable. That's okay, now, okay, that, I feel like that's a little bit unrealistic. Because, for example, let's say you have a husband who um, was the CEO of the company, he was making X, 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 X amount, amount of money, and his company went bankrupt or whatever and then he has lost that sense of income to allow you guys yeah. to maintain that lifestyle. that lifestyle so let's now say that that has ended you can't expect him to then get back to that like of this course. it's going to yeah. it might take years and years and years so like when you guys are going through that period you can then now say okay because now as the woman i'm not making more, x yeah. more x, x amount of money more than my husband i'm not going to just spend and look yeah, down on him no, no. Then, if, like you said because you just said now you, you're the kind of woman that yeah. like you do that but even go from biblical sense it says that women should honor and respect yeah, their husbands husband. of course that's if they are worth being honored because yeah. If you're, if you're not, are you, are you not trying to say that because the husband and no, but well, if he's, he has to try, the whole the whole point is in trying. Like if he if he's if I'm bankrupt, sorry, if he's bankrupt at that time and he's not making any effort to look for a job, he's useless. Yeah. But if he's coming out and he's going out and saying I'm looking for a job because I want to get back, exactly. he's worth it. Mm-hmm. Not the one that sit down like a bomb, not lifting and say my wife will handle it all. I think my thing is just make sure with a guy that has ambition. Like exactly. an ambitious guy is going to like no matter what, he's going to want to work hard. He's going to want to be doing something. Exactly. Do Don't just be with somebody that just doesn't even care. You know. Exactly. Um, especially if it's like we just started dating and then. Um, any more than you and then you just decide that you still don't want to get a job <laughs> now nah, because we're students right exactly you don't want to get a job you just want to be chilling there and you know we spending my fucking money <laughs> nah, nah. that's, that's why it's, it's that, the like... situation you're in so mm-hmm, exactly, exactly. True. someone made a statement as a woman i cost money so therefore my boyfriend or my husband should be able to cater for me 100 percent because i sleep with him i cook for him i clean for him so what do you guys think of that statement do you believe that that's something as women that we should hold on to or do you believe that's trash i honestly feel like it goes hand in hand to be honest with you the other day if you're making all the sacrifices for a man he should also be able to cater to you and treat you like like a queen you know if if he has the money and he's yeah, like, babe, 
you know what? You look really nice today. Let me just go buy you some Louboutins. You know, that's how it's supposed to be, like, if he has the money. But you as a woman, you cannot just come and say, oh, because I open my legs, and then I do this for him, then I expect him to always give me money whenever I want to. That is complete trash. Because you yourself, you are being a liability. That's true. And you don't want to be a liability. You're not a car. Why should you be costing somebody money, 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 money? That's true. True. And if you're saying, oh, because I cook for him and I sleep with him, excuse me, can't get it, can't get it. You can go and... I mean, like, what's I'm you are the prostitute, pretty much. That's just it. You get, like, yeah. every day, you're supposed to be able to support your mind, you're supposed to be able to support you. Like, I feel like everything goes hand in hand. in hand. Especially in this day and age. Easy and the other exactly. Is doing all the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alright, so that leads me to the next question. So, we're talking about, like, relationships. So, what if your husband says, Honey, you've worked so hard in your life. Now, I want to work for you. I want you to be a housewife. How have I worked so hard? Excuse me. Like, <laughs> like I, I went to school, oh, like, like to university. Yeah. I'm coming out. I'm so feeling I'm just getting married. Like, which work have I done? Like, mm-hmm. no. But like, what if he says, you know, I want to be house. I want to provide for you. I don't want you to go through that stress. I just want you to be there for my kids, mm-hmm. and I want you there for me. So does that mean you don't want me to do what I want to do? Like, what if I want to start a business? What mm-hmm. if I want to travel the world and leave you? Exactly. <laughs> With your money, <laughs> like, what exactly does he mean? Like, you want to just stay at home and just take care of the kids? Yes, yeah. that's all he wants. He's going to provide you with funds and he just wants you to take care of the kids and take care of the home. Yeah. I have a very, very big problem with that, to be honest with you. I have a very, very massive and big ass problem with that because <laughs> if anything should happen, like, where does that leave me? Obviously, like, divorce settlements and all that stuff, but when I'm now through the divorce and then I now want to get back into the workforce and I don't have work experience. I got there from school in 1997 and I want to work 2020. <laughs> no one is going to employ me. True. Just yeah. but again it's different if you say I want to be a housewife, yeah? I'm like, okay, hold on, no problem. Oh. I, I bet give me 20 million there, let me go and open a store, open a boutique, yeah. let me open a business for myself in my own name. Exactly. My profits are mine. Yeah. The business is mine, 100 percent alone to run. This doesn't have anything to do with you. This is not like part of our like it's part of our marriage, obviously. But God forbid if you get a divorce, this is hundred percent mine. You don't have anything to do with it. Then I do not mind because now I work for myself. Do you understand? I'm an entrepreneur. I don't have to wake up nine to five and do nine to five. Do you understand? So that it I can mind. either be coming from a selfish place or a genuinely helpful place. So if he is saying, I want you to stay at home, not do anything other than taking care of my kids, yeah. then you know that, okay, that sounds weird. Exactly. Why and you need to know this before, before you even get married. Yeah, you because have to have that this, conversation. this conversation always happens after. after. That. You have to have that conversation. Yeah. Me, personally, I wouldn't mind being a stay-at-home mom. I won't lie to you. I feel like the main reason why I work is to get money to do a lot of things. So if my husband says, okay, you know what, I want to take away that stress from you and I want to be the one providing, first of all, you have to find out the kind of guy he is. Is it that kind of bad guy that you have to beg him to get money to buy pride or something? Or the kind of guy that's like, okay, I know you need this. Here you go. This is the money for the month. Because I really don't mind. I personally even plan that if I'm going to have kids, I want to take at least 10 years, be with them in those formative years, and then enter the workforce or start something of my own. Mm-hmm. Right? So I, I won't necessarily mind, right? But it's what is the motive behind that? Exactly. There are some guys that take advantage of that, they leave you out of things, yeah. they don't get your help because they think you're not too shen off or you don't know a lot of things. They tend to undermine you. They exactly. might watch you know, yeah. exactly with some sister in the office <laughs> or something. So they just that motive has to be there. You have to why. know his motive. Yeah. But I just feel like it's adequate risky. <laughs> and I don't I, I don't see why you would want to even put yourself in that kind of situation. Like no offense, because God forbid you should always Try to plan for like the rain day, yeah, of course. Like the worst case scenario. But God forbid, though, let's say he loses everything again, or God forbid, like he dies or he gets yeah. divorced. Where does that? But well, even if you're a stay at home mom, you have to be smart, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He's giving you money. You save. save. You know, save for your then money. Your savings can only get you so far. To uh, be honest, then that means you shouldn't be a stay at home mom. That's true. If you, if you think you don't have enough money to, you know, if push comes to shove, like, exactly. take care of things, then, I mean, you also have to be smart. Even if you're working for yourself, you can be stupid with your money. That's so, true. you can be a stay-at-home mom who make more than someone that's earning their own money because you don't know money management, right? So, if you're going to be a stay-at-home mom, you obviously, the guy has to be financially stable enough mm-hmm. to take care Never of you. financially home. stable. Like, my nigga has to be stinking rich. I used to spend <laughs> that money for 20 kilometers. Oh, 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 oh,
the most. See me, financial stability is more of a comfort thing. Can I afford to do the things that I need? Yeah. That is not enough for me to be a stay at home. I need to also afford the things that I that I need. And I want. The things that I want. I want to also afford my luxury lifestyle that I want. <laughs> wow. Wow. So this wow. is what I'm saying. <laughs> so if he's asking you to be a housewife, mm-hmm. you have to ask him like, okay. If I'm going to be a housewife, whatever I ask you to give me, you give me. Can you give me? If I want to do anything with the money you give me, I can do. Yes. Exactly. Then that's when you know, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm down for that. But you know? also, I feel like um, you guys have to have this conversation before you guys listen to me. Exactly. Me. Right. Exactly. If you meet me and then I work, I'm an entrepreneur and stuff like that, I'm doing my own business. Then you not marry me. You not tell me, well, oh, I want you to be a stay at home mom. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. It's like it doesn't really yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, make sense. So it's like conversation. Definitely. Yeah, like it doesn't. That's why you have to know if it's coming from a selfish place. True. Exactly. If you're about to blow and make it, exactly. And that's like he's he's telling, telling you. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. There are some guys that won't want to see their wife get ahead of them. True. There are some guys that are very competitive and they have this. That 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 bad chat. <laughs> I don't want to mention it. Like that guy, woman is inferior. Yeah, like no, because like, he even said that. Um, it gets to a point where like okay let's say i've lost my job now and i yeah. stop making much money right but my woman is when she starts making money she's going to start me and then me i now want to now say okay how can i now make more money, money than, than her that's it so like, it's not like the competition yeah, thing. Yeah, that, that's not necessary so that's you're not deep in yeah, like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what i think we're doing right now yeah but basically okay talking about that so would you guys sign a prenup May I can sign a prenup. You guys know yeah, especially if I'm the richer one in the relationship, I would actually want my husband and I sign a prenup. Rather, you marry me six months down the line, come and take fifty percent of my property and go. So even yeah. me as a woman, if I marry like a billionaire, billionaire, like this guy, oh whoa, oh my baba, no one like I don't mind signing a prenup. As long as that prenup is going to take care of me when I'm done, not that I will go now, I'll marry you, then we divorce one one year later. And then go I don't have anything. Way. I go with zero. No, I don't want that mm-hmm. because I'm sure relationship also made some sacrifices, and I'm sure there's like prices that want something, you know. Yeah. So I don't mind signing a prenup if it's going to also benefit me as well. I'm not going to lose everything. I don't mind doing that. What do you guys think? Yeah, same here. I personally feel like I personally is I don't think it's something like it won't be priority for me. Like mm-hmm. if I'm getting married, like okay, I need to sign a prenup. Okay, I need to, because it's like I'm looking at what if it doesn't go well. Thank you. So I'm not you looking at that. Know. At the end of the day, there's risks in everything we Anything do. So you have to be able to you have to be risks. willing to with the person you love. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. And you should be smart still. You're in a, you're you're married. You should still be saving. You understand? Let me tell you, you something. Let me tell you something about those savings. If you marry a billionaire right now. And he's giving you three hundred thousand dollars, and you're saving one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'm not guys, saying. And you guys should break up. And then the reason why you break up is in the prenup. He's going to take your savings because uh-huh. on the day the savings, like it was his money he gave to you in the first place, and the sure. prenup, like you walk out with nothing. So let me now say, if you had one, let's say you have Bill Gates now, you go and marry somebody like Secure that is selling biscuits. <laughs> you would, you would not make her sign the prenup. Yeah, you make us. You have to be smart. You have to be smart. You have to think outside the box. You're so what? You want to go and be putting money in an offshore account? Be smart, bro. Be smart. You're still going to take everything. Don't you understand? Like every day, everything is listed. But why would you know that Sakura will steal your money when you marry her? Exactly. Like if Sakura has the. I don't know. But then, like, when they get a divorce, you're not getting married, so you can get a divorce. Exactly. So then, why you no? Because you said how. Why won't you know secure or steal your money? Exactly. No, so if, you're not, 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 if you're not if you're not getting my get divorce, then why are you getting a prenup if you know that okay, we're not going to get divorced? That means you see divorce in okay, your future. Say for example, that's it. No, I mean, it's it's just Kardashians, management. The Kardashians, whoever they marry, they have prenups, right? Yeah. Why? Because the business is not only just their business, it's the whole family that's involved. Exactly. So if I get a divorce with you, it's going to affect my whole family. Exactly. Everybody's business. Exactly. So it depends on your situation. Yes. I personally but then, don't want to. But my situation might make me. I feel like I'm saying it's not priority. So if we're both equally rich, okay. same level, oh, we are going to get a prenup. No, no problem. Then there, That's if fine. you're equally rich, then there's no harm in getting a prenup because you still get half, 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 half. Mm-hmm. You understand? If you are equally rich, yeah, there's then there's no harm in getting in not getting a prenup because yeah, because you're going to right? like I feel like 
that prenup thing just already puts an expiry date on the marriage. It's like, okay, it's, I love yeah. you for now, but I might not love you in future. And then you so always it, have at the back of yes, your mind. Yes, I have So any small fight is like, I have my prenup, prenup but I want exactly. to. If you, you won't if be you, willing to. So let me tell you something. Till the end, it also fight. depends on how this prenup issue comes up. Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you something. If I get married to like a fucking billionaire again. But I'm not but like seriously though I forgot my point shit basically <laughs> like I feel like if you're going to get married to somebody you're going to go out and say your vows for better for worse for mm-hmm. everything richer or poorer once you say those kind of vows to somebody then you're like but we're gonna sign up print up though it's like saying like shit on everything you guys just did mm-hmm. all that commitment is whack because at the end of the day I still don't trust you you should trust me enough to say that anything should happen Fine, we shared those boundaries, we had those things together. You gave me ideas and I gave you ideas. We had those valuable things. So how would you just tell me you walk out with nothing that you came in with? That's what, what I'm not saying. The sense. prenup does not mean that you're going to walk out with zero. Like obviously when you send a prenup, yeah, you, yeah, the, you guys are going to negotiate your thing. Your yeah. Not that like well, how if, if I'm the man now, now and I'm I'm fucking billionaire and I got married one one whole, like one poor person got like yeah. and I got married one biscuit seller or something <laughs> down the road. And then we not get married and then she don't want to come and take 80 percent of my property because let's not forget when it comes to family courts especially in north america they always 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 favor the woman but when you have situations whereby like rich men are paying thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to women yeah. who are their baby mamas yeah. do you understand like so you should always put that in mind as well i also think of the man like at the end of the day if you now if you are fucking rich yeah. don't lie if you are fucking rich yeah, like okay. you have all the money okay wouldn't you want if you're married like someone who is not someone from an average background or from, from a poor ground, wouldn't you want to protect your wealth as well? Of I'm not course. saying that the person working with be zero, no. Yeah. I'm not saying that you can also negotiate your prenup as well. So for example, um, let's say you prenup, you can say that, okay, if you get a divorce because I caused Zara cheating on me with this person or with this, you know, I caused Zara cheating, okay, that's grounds for divorce. Okay, yeah. cool, Zara cheated though, but well, does that mean that Zara should work away with zero? No. no. Zara can work away with 30% and I can keep my 70 gigants. Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of zero and hundred. Yeah. At the end of the day, the prenup is not. It's just to ensure. That's true. Yeah. But like, your, still, your it name. won't be the first thing I will think about. It's only going to come about. Nobody's saying it's like, the first thing I'm going to think about. But to this is best, something. To that's again. Yeah. This is one of those it's difficult just, conversations yeah. that you have to have. If I'm writing a rich yeah, person, it's, 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 and it's, if you take it personally, then based on what you want, at the end of the day. And then you never know, like, because sometimes when you, okay, sure, you guys are married and it's a very loving relationship and everything but then like when i get to that divorce stage this person can just switch, switch up, up on you <laughs> and like you're like nah you're not getting anything that's and then there's no prenup and then you're like mm, okay, what am i supposed to, to that's happen? true that's true that does happen i mean that comes that's to that where, and i guess in hand, yes. like having a prenup is just because you guys are making it sound like a prenup is a bad thing and it's, it's like you said no, okay no, no, let me tell you how you guys i'm not trying to make it look like i'm saying to make it sound like it's a bad thing and then signing no. up means that you guys are saying okay my Why my marriage is going to end you said you put an expiration into your marriage but, 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 but it doesn't have to be no. like that but that's the thing we're talking about personally she feels yeah i feel like if i do that like i personally like, feel like i will always have, have you at the back of my mind that i have a premium and if anything, anything happens yeah i'm just going to like Whatever, I'm going to break up with you, bro. I'm yeah, but then, like, you. that's the thing. But there's no big deal in getting a prenup. At the end of the day, exactly. yes, if you want a prenup, discuss it with your boyfriend yeah, yeah. and get a prenup. It's not a big deal. Like, for it's based on what you want. But then it's also what like, you both want. How you see a prenup? Because then, if you see it as that, then you always think about it. Well, well if we have a fight today, then my exactly. prenup is there. But then, if you're thinking, okay, this prenup is just for me to secure my business. So, you know, like, it's there, nothing's going to happen to it if we do break up. But at the same time, I still love you, we're still married, everything is good. If we do have a fight or if we're like going off, I'll try to make it work so we don't actually have to go to the point where we have to, mm-hmm. you know, start thinking about yeah. things to split and all that. And it's also like your will as well. Why do people have wills? Exactly. To protect their family, to protect their businesses. Mm-hmm. Because if someone should die without a will, the bank can easily come and take the property and yeah. stuff like that. Do you understand? Yeah. But why do people get wills to protect their families, to protect their investments and protect their businesses? And that's how me I view a prenup as well. It is a, it is an important legal documentation that you need if you are marrying someone who is a fucking billionaire and you are zero. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be zero. Yeah, like this is just extreme. It's, it's yeah. up to you if if you want to get it. If you don't feel like it's going to help you, okay. then don't get it. Okay. 
Okay, guys, so this is Ratchet AF, but I lost the outro to my video and I mistakenly deleted it. But don't forget to check out the girls. I'll leave their links in the description box, all their social media links. And as well, I have a vlog that I'm working on. It's going to be out at the end of before the end of next week so you guys should definitely definitely go check it out as well and don't forget to like share and subscribe leave a comment if you agree what we're saying or if you don't agree at all and i will catch you guys later bye Bye.